My name is Nick Kerber, and to start it all off, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to catch up one-on-one -on -one with our first special guest, Kookaburras and New South Wales Pride midfielder, Tom Craig. Hey, Tom, great to see you. Um, how's things at your end? Things not too bad, not too bad. We got the day off training today. It's Thursday, which is a an a RDO registered day off, um, and things are good. I think um, playing golf this afternoon with a couple of the boys, Matt Swan, Blake Govers, Tim Brand, um, in a in a foursomes match. So I'm just psyching myself up for that, basically. Nice. Uh, before we get into it, there is a little bit of a rumour that it gets quite competitive on the golf course with you guys as well. Are there quite a few of the cookers that don't mind going out and having a hit? Yeah, it can confirm. That's true. It's interesting because um, it's kind of like we, we take our high performance expectations and apply them to a low performance environment. So um, it, can be pretty, it can be pretty frustrating, but there's a lot of us who really, really love it um, and hate it, but primarily love it and we play a bit. You see quite a few. I mean, there's a, some cricketers like Ricky Ponting just pops up to mind, who's an excellent, obviously, cricketer, but apparently he can hit a golf ball pretty well as well. Um, does, is there any correlation between sports where you have a stick and a ball um, that you can do well in both, or are you guys a bit <laughs> of an exception to, to that? <laughs> I'd like to think that we can all hit the ball reasonably well. Um, we hit it far as to the direction, like that's up for debate, but... I think, to be honest, I reckon what it is, is that a lot of athletes have a lot of time. Like, we're very, very time rich. Like, when we go away, obviously, we don't have a lot of time, but um, training can only go for so long in the day. And unless you're studying or working, um, there's a lot of hours in your day that you need to fill in, and, and golf is a great activity to do that. So, I reckon that's, that's probably what it is. That's my hunch, anyway. Well, I'm glad that you've got a bit of time to catch up and do this interview. So, thanks for sitting down, and, um, yeah, it'd be great. We're just... Going to get stuck in and try and hear a bit of your story and also what's happening um, with the Kookaburras at the moment. Now, um, before I ask you a bit about your backstory and where you were born and how, where you grew up, um, I'm probably jumping ahead a bit, but uh, you're the host of an increasingly popular podcast called The Help Side. There are a lot of podcasts out there, but um, this is one of my favourites and something that you need to get around. Um, it's a little side project that you started up. Uh, I'll ask you a bit more about it later, but considering you're used to being the one um, in my seat doing the interviewing, how does it does it feel a bit strange being on the other <laughs> side of it? It's scary, mate. It's scary. I can't just hide behind <laughs> questions. I've actually got to provide some content. Mm. Oh, you've, you're good for it. Um, now, there you've got a you had a New Zealand passport. You might even still have a New Zealand passport, um, but you're not a New Zealander. You play for the proudly for the Kookaburras. Um, can you give us like the Tom Craig story of where you were born, um, where you've moved around and how you've ended up to being in Perth? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, was, I was actually born in, in Sydney. So my elder brother um, and my younger sister, all three of us were born in Sydney. We're born to, to Kiwi parents, um, proudly Kiwi parents. And um, yeah, we, we grew up in Sydney. We were pretty lucky. We travelled around a fair bit. Most of, the, most of our family is over in New Zealand, so we'd get back and forth a fair bit. But um, yeah, I guess, I don't know, pretty, pretty standard kind of childhood in, in Sydney life. Played a lot of sport. Um, and then the opportunity came up to move to Perth when I was uh, 19, I think. Um, the passport is a fixture because just before my debut, um, I'd actually played on a New Zealand passport for Australian in like an Australian Youth Olympic Festival thing. Um, and for whatever, it, like I didn't, unbeknownst to me, um, you actually had to have a, a passport in order to play for the country. Like the birth certificate or certificate of citizenship or anything like that isn't acceptable um, currency. It's got to be a passport. So when the time came to debut, they were doing the final checks, like oh yeah, and passport, and I produced my, <laughs> I produced my my Kiwi passport and um, was rejected. So. I missed my debut and I was scrambling around that day to, to try and secure an Australian passport, which fortunately happened and I was able to play the next day. But um, yeah, that's where the passport comes into things. But now I travel on an Australian passport. It's just a lot easier. So a bit of kudos there for the government or whatever department um, gets the passports done that they managed to sort one out for you in 24 hours. Yeah, it was rapid. Yeah, it was very lucky. Hey, um, now, there's some conjecture on how hockey came to take your fancy as well. Um, I've heard some rumours around that you loved ice hockey and that there was no decent ice hockey rinks in Australia. Um, 
Is, that, is there any truth to that? Or can you clarify why you started playing hockey and I guess what it was that, um, I don't know, that attracted you to the sport? Yeah, I can. Um, that is true. Uh, as I said, we were lucky to move around a fair bit and we spent a year in Canada when I was pretty young. I don't really remember it, but my older brother does. Um, and we came back pretty obsessed with with ice hockey. We, we lived in Toronto, had um, Toronto Maple Leafs jerseys and Boston Bruins jerseys and the like. And I remember watching like, the NHL's greatest goals on VHS um, every Saturday morning, I reckon. And then there was, um, we were pumped when NHL's greatest goals was upgraded to NHL overtime, which was um, another kind of NHL documentary. But yeah, we wanted to play. I knew there was an ice rink around the corner um, at Macquarie Shopping Centre, which is probably 15 minutes up the road. But um, before we were allowed to play ice hockey, we had to try field hockey. I think mum was a little bit hesitant at the cost, I think. Like, ice hockey is a pretty expensive sport to play in Australia with the pads and um, yeah. rink fees. I don't really know. We didn't We didn't ever go down that rabbit hole very far because field hockey kind of got in the way of that. Um, and I remember going to training at my first um, my first Minkies um, at Ride Hunters Hill Hockey Club. And I just loved it. Like, as I said, at that time, I was playing every sport you could imagine. I just loved it. Loved running around, getting getting out there and, and having fun with, with friends. So, um, yeah, and I was, I was hooked as, as they say, I loved it. Like yeah. I found it really difficult. It was a tough sport, like just kind of controlling the ball with the stick. I don't know, whatever it was just really attracted me to it. Um, and, and I kind of stayed with it and here we are. Um, yeah. So you started off in Minkies at Ride, um, and you've pretty much progressed. I mean, you played for them in Sydney last year when COVID was on it. You were back there having run around with them. So they must have, um, the impact and the, I guess the influence that they've had on your journey, your hockey journey is pretty significant. Yeah, massively. I mean, I don't know if I'd still be playing hockey without, without um, joining such a great club. I know most, most hockey clubs around Australia um, are fantastic, but Ride was just the one that, um, filled that space for me and I yeah I just like just kind of the friendships that I'm that I made there um, a lot of my closest mates um, ended up joining Ride um, because I played for Ride or I've made through playing for Ride um, and yeah just the community I loved being down there it was pretty close to home um, I would make sure I'd coach a couple of juniors teams um, on the way through and getting back to be able to play last year was was brilliant because um yeah once you kind of move to Perth start playing for Australia the fact is is that yeah. clubs on the east coast see a lot less of you which is a shame but um the way it is so being able to get back and play a couple of games um was awesome fantastic like I just I really really love it and you got the opportunity to play with your brother too last year he's still running around having a hit <laughs> over there <laughs> Yeah, I did. Um, it was kind of short-lived. I actually did my quad in the second game back. So I only ended up playing like one game for Ride, and I was there for the whole season, which was a shame. But um, yeah, that was awesome. That's, that was brilliant. He he's, lives in Canberra now. Um, and I don't think he's playing this year. He's trained for a marathon that's coming up in April. Um, so he's not, he's not letting hockey get in the way of his, his training for that. And, um, but yeah, right. hopefully and so where's his... Where's his marathon inspiration come from? Was he aware that Jake Wetton had done one or? <laughs> nah, he, um, our old boy runs, runs marathons. I've actually great memories of watching um, my old man run a marathon in, uh, in Canberra, actually. So this is going to be the same, same sort of thing. I think Ben's aiming to, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think he'll beat his time, but um, I think it's kind of cool how um, Ben's first marathon is, is probably the last one we saw saw dad do so yeah. there's a bit of competition there but but i think the old boys time will stand i reckon um now the under 13 and under 18 national championships are coming up um next month uh did you compete for new south wales under age level and if so um what can you remember from some of those times <laughs> yeah i did it was the best um I loved it. I reckon that was, that was the most fun. I was thinking about it the other day, like the excitement of getting on a plane. Like I'd love to yeah. be able to get on a plane now, but the excitement, of, <laughs> the excitement of getting on a plane, like taking a week off school um, and going in and competing just like the, the nerves. I reckon that's kind of where I remember the first time I played kind of like state level stuff. It was um, under 12s, PWSA. So I think I was year five. Matt Dawson was in the team. He was year six. Yep. And I remember... Um, just when the game started, like just my breath, like 
just being out of breath. As soon as the ball went, I was out of breath just because it was so exciting. Um, and I remember just thinking, like, this is awesome. Like, playing this sort of level was just brilliant. So, um, yeah. Cool. I'm sure, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of the kids um, that are feeling exactly the same way next month. And um, I think to hear some of your recollections and how much, I don't know, how much of a good time it was for you, um, hopefully that resonates with all of the competitors that go and take the field in the next couple of weeks. Um, having New Zealand parents, were, were we ever at risk of losing you to rugby union? I mean, you're a powerful, strong looking man. Um, what, like, was there any interest from your, from your dad to want you to play rugby union? I mean, New Zealand's very obviously strong in hockey as well, but. Um, yeah, I reckon dad had a, a, a vested interest in me not playing rugby union. I reckon. I think that's probably part of why um, I ended up with hockey, but um, yeah, he's got a lot of. Well, I'm not sure if you can call them recollections, but um, yeah, he got knocked out a fair bit playing playing footy, playing on the wing, um, and having the big number eight pick up the ball off the back of the scrum and targeting <laughs> and targeting you. Um, so I don't think he really was chuffed at the idea of me playing rugby. I played during school um, as soon as I was a bit like old enough to to decide what I wanted to play. I played as much as I could. I, I love the game. I think it's great. Um, there are a couple of moments there and where maybe some of my hockey coaches might have been a bit upset by um, me playing games of rugby when I should have been playing hockey or resting up for a big game. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just, I loved it. I love it so much. I think it's such a great game. Um, so fun trying to have a run around of touch rugby whenever I can. But um, yeah, I think I wanted to be an all black growing up. So there's that. 